place to you're listening to the Culips English podcast. To download the study guide for this episode, which includes the transcript, detailed vocabulary explanations, real-world examples, and a quiz, visit our website, culips.com. C U L I P S.com. Hello everybody. My name is Andrew. And I'm Jeremy, and you're listening to Culips. Welcome back to Culips, everyone. Today we have a simplified speech episode for you. And if you're not familiar with simplified speech, it's the Culips series where we have totally natural English conversations, but we speak a little bit slower. Than we do in our everyday lives, and today I'm joined by my co-host Jeremy. Hello, Jeremy. Hello, Andrew. Jeremy, recently you and I recorded a simplified speech episode about Elon Musk. Do you remember that? Yes, I remember. And we titled that episode "The Most Interesting Man in the World," Elon Musk. And listeners, you really liked this episode. We got a lot of positive feedback, a lot of compliments, and good emails and comments on social media about this episode. So I thought, well, we have to record an episode about the most interesting woman in the world. And this was a hard decision to make. There's so many interesting women out there, and of course, it's kind of a silly exercise to limit. <laughs> <laughs> One person out of the entire out of how yeah. many women are there in the world? Billions, of course, right? But there is one young lady in particular. Her name is Greta Thunberg. She's getting a lot of attention recently over the last couple of years, and she was actually named Person of the Year by Time Magazine for 2019. Wow. So I thought, why don't we? Crown Greta Thunberg as the most interesting woman in the world, and talk about her By today. Yeah, the Culips <laughs> crown. <laughs> the Culips crown. It is invisible. <laughs> invisible. Yeah. So we're going to talk about young Greta here today, Jeremy. But before we do、mm -hmm. that, I should remind all of our listeners that there's a study guide for this episode that can be downloaded. On our website, Culips dot com, it is, in our opinion, the best way to study with us. And there's lots of awesome study content in the study guide. And if you're interested to learn more about it, just visit our website, and you can check it out. So everyone, I think what we'll do here today is break this episode down into three parts. I think in part one, we'll talk a little bit about why Greta is worthy of discussion. Why is she so famous? Why is she so famous? Why is she so interesting? And in the second part, we'll talk a little bit about her background, where she comes from. And what kind of influences in her life led her to become the person she is today? And then we'll wrap it up by talking about some of the controversy that is surrounding her, because she is a controversial figure, which is a little bit hard for me to believe. But there's a lot of controversy around her, so we'll talk about that in the third part of. The episode here today. So, Jeremy, maybe I will ask you a question to kick things、right. off. Yeah. And the question is, why is Greta Thunberg worthy of discussion? What is she famous for? Why is she so interesting? Well, I think probably the most notable detail about her is that she is very young currently. She is 16 years old, but I believe she was 
of course, a bit younger than that when she first started doing what she's doing now. So, the first fact is that she's 16 years old currently. And the second thing that people should know is that she is a climate change activist, we could say. Exactly. That is why she is well known, is because she is a climate change activist. And she talks a lot about humans' impact on the environment, about our carbon footprint, and about how climate change is really an existential threat. Existential threat. That's a tough one. So, existential is related to existence, right? So, you know, she's talking here. In very serious words, that if we don't fix some of the climate issues that people all over the world are facing, that this could be the end of humanity or the end of life on Earth as we know it. Climate change is a threat to our existence, right? We might not be here anymore in, in the not too distant future. If we don't change the way we are doing things, she also talks a lot about our carbon footprint. This is a good term to know if, if our listeners don't know it. Carbon is an element that is present in most of the things that we use in our daily life plastics and, you know, most of these products that we use, including gasoline and oil, all of these things are. Carbon based, we can say.、Um, so, our carbon footprint, the footprint is like the record or the thing that you leave behind. So, a business that does not use any plastic or paper at all and produces no trash has a very small carbon footprint or no carbon footprint, you can say. Uh, although no carbon footprint is almost impossible these days. Almost impossible. And you're absolutely right, Jeremy, that we can talk about a carbon footprint in terms of a business or an industry, or we can talk about it on a personal level too. You hear individuals、yeah. talk about reducing their carbon footprint. For example, if someone starts to commute by bicycle instead of driving a car every day, they could say that they've reduced their carbon footprint. By going green and riding a bike. Or for, for my family, at least, we, do, we don't use paper towels at all.、Mm. Uh, we、okay. use reusable napkins that made from material that we made ourselves and we wash、mm -hmm. that. We also、mm -hmm. use cloth diapers most of the time with my son. And we try to minimize the amount of carbon that we use in our daily life. Uh, by not getting extra spoons and forks, plastic spoons and forks from the restaurants when we get food.、Uh, we try to go to places that don't use disposable plates、uh, and things like that. But it's definitely not easy in this day and age. Absolutely. Now, one of the things that Greta is famous for, and some people have even called this the Greta effect, is flight shaming. Flight mm. shaming. Mm. So, as everyone knows, when you fly on an airplane from one place to another place, there is a lot of carbon emission that is given off by the airplane. A lot, a lot, a lot. And This is, of course, bad for the environment and contributes to climate change. And so Greta advocates that we should stop flying. And as a result, people are starting to feel perhaps a little ashamed of flying or guilty about flying because of the, the negative effect to the environment. And Greta. She practices what she preaches. She <laughs> travels around when she's giving speeches and meeting with world leaders. She doesn't fly from one place to another place. She travels in a more eco friendly way. 
And recently, she just traveled to and from North America. So we should say that she is Swedish. She's from Europe and Sweden. But she traveled to and from North America in a sailboat <laughs> across the Atlantic a, Ocean. A sailboat? Really? Yeah, yeah. My goodness. That. Yeah, she sailed across the sea. Brave girl. Brave girl. I don't think she was alone. I think she had a team with I her. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> but this is pretty extreme. Jeremy, you talked about reducing your carbon footprint through using, you know, reusable diapers and cloth towels. Would you ever think about sailing to Korea instead of flying to Korea? Could you be shamed into doing this? At this point, no. But if there was ever an option that did not produce such waste, I would do my best to get on that option. For example, an electric plane or a solar-powered plane or something like that, I would try to, to go the other route. There is the option of carbon offset. Have you heard of this carbon offset? No, I haven't. So if you want to pay significantly more for your plane ticket, the airline, I'm not sure if every airline does this, or maybe there's some charities that do it too. They will try to do something beneficial for the environment, like maybe plant, I don't know, 100 trees in your name or something to offset the carbon emission. So because you're doing something negative to the environment by flying, the airline or the charity, whoever you choose to do this, will do something positive for the environment so that you're kind of equalizing your impact on the climate. I like that. So I haven't tried this myself, but I think it's a good idea and something that I might look into in the future because I do travel frequently, several times a year, and I'm starting to feel ashamed of it. I'm starting <laughs> to feel guilty. You've been hit by the Greta effect. <laughs> I'm, I'm a victim of the Greta effect, yeah. Okay, Jeremy, well, this is kind of who Greta is today and what she's doing, okay? But maybe we should look back on her upbringing and see how she became famous and how she became the person she is now. And that's what we'll talk about in part two of this episode is her background. So we mentioned that she's from Stockholm, Sweden. Oh. For our listeners who are unfamiliar with her, what kind of personality does she have? What kind of person is she? I would say she's very precocious. 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 That's not a very commonly used word. In other words, she is wise beyond her years. So someone who is precocious, the pre in there, P-R-E, the Latin root there, relates to before, usually. So this word is kind of saying that she is wise before she should be, because she's only currently 16, and yet she is speaking with world leaders, speaking at conferences, and going all over the place trying to make major change on a global scale. Exactly. And when you hear her talk, she has a very strong resolve. She's very serious. And people listen to her, right? She's very effective as a speaker. She, she garners the attention of an audience. Now, we should mention that this may be inherited. This may be an inherited trait for her because her mother is an opera singer and her father is an actor. So both of them are using their voice in front of large numbers of people. So uh, perhaps that contributed to her current personality, her precociousness, <laughs> maybe. I think that's fair to assume, absolutely, because you know she has a performance background in her family, right? So maybe she's more comfortable speaking in front of other people. Of course, this is just conjecture. This is just a guess, but I think, yeah, that's safe to assume. And so, Jeremy, 
Greta, when she was younger, she learned about climate change at school, and she just couldn't really understand why nobody seemed to be working on solving the problem. She just couldn't comprehend why nobody seemed to be tackling the issue of fighting climate change. And so, as a result of this, she tried and actually was successful at convincing her parents to adapt to a vegan diet. Now, a vegan diet is a diet that we've actually talked about on Cubes before because Morag, one of our co hosts, is vegan. So she explained what this diet is about. But essentially, vegans don't eat. Or really consume in any way any animal products, right? And this can have a real positive impact on the environment because, you know, factory farming is unfortunately a real terrible thing in, in a lot of ways. But one of the negative results of factory farming is a lot of carbon emission. And for those who don't know, factory farming is the term for very, very, very large farms with hundreds or even thousands of, of animals in one place.、Uh, and th- these are essentially very big farms.、Mm-hmm. Uh, but in the past, traditionally, a farm is usually a smaller operation. So when people say factory farms, they mean. Uh, very large operation, and usually it means that the animals are not treated very well at all. They are usually treated like product and not living creatures. Exactly. So she convinced her family to go vegan, and this kind of sparked a revolution in her because she realized at this moment that. She can make an impact in the lives of other people. She could convince other people to change their minds and, as a result, make a difference in the world. And I guess this was her light bulb moment, you could say. It's that moment where she realized what she needed to do. And so she sees all the adults around her not doing anything about climate change. She feels a very strong conviction that something needs to be done about climate change. And she also realizes that she can have a positive impact on the world. And I guess all of these elements kind of combined and made her to start protesting the Swedish parliament. And to try and get politicians in her country to pay attention and to do something about climate change. So she started to become a person of action, right? A person who doesn't just sit on the sidelines and complain <laughs> about problems like many of us do, but like somebody do. who acts, <laughs> yeah, like I do for the most like part. Like I do, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But somebody who actually gets out there and tries to make the world a better place, tries to make a difference. So she started protesting inaction, inaction meaning not taking action.、Uh, she started protesting inaction in front of the Swedish parliament、uh, with her own handmade sign that said, School Strike for the Climate. And these were called the Friday protests because she protested at first on her own and then later other people joined.、Uh, but she protested every Friday. So every Friday she would skip school and go there with her protesting sign and、uh, stand in front of Swedish parliament and say, hey, why aren't you doing anything about these climate changes? So, this was sort of the beginning of her environmental activism. And、uh, as a result, all over the world, youth movements have popped up. And a lot of young people are standing up and talking about this issue at their schools and to their local governments as a result of Greta's actions through social media and Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and things like this. People are able to find out about what she's doing, and they are inspired to do the same in their communities. 
I think there's two reasons why this movement is particularly unique. The first is that we can see the impact of social media, right? Yeah. Greta was able to get her word out from Sweden, which is a pretty small, isolated country, and it spread like wildfire across the globe, right? And this was due to the power of social media. And the second thing that's really interesting about this movement is that it's a youth movement and it's not just college students. It's like elementary school students, middle school students, high school students. It's youngsters, right? I think the really impactful thing here about children becoming environmental activists is in school, children are always told about their future. They're told that Uh, you're here in school so that you can have a better future. You're studying math today so that you can get into a better college and get a good job. And so what I'm saying is that school is future-oriented. They are always telling kids to focus on their future. But if the planet isn't around to support them in that future, if that future does not exist, then what's the point in going to school? This, I think, is what makes her message so powerful. I agree with you. And it is really powerful to see children protesting. I think this yeah. is the first time in my life that I've seen children protesting in mass, right? Many, yeah. many, many thousands of them together. Wow. That's, that's inspiring. I get chills just thinking about that right now. Jeremy, I think we're both on the same page here in that we agree with Greta's message and we respect her for trying to make the world a better place, right? Yes, definitely. From my point of view, her intentions are good and her goal is admirable. But there are a lot of people who would disagree with me. And actually, she's become quite a controversial figure as of late. And so I thought here in the last part of this episode, we could talk about some of the controversy that is surrounding her. So have you heard about any of this controversy, Jeremy? Or have you, you know, picked up on any of the negativity that's surrounding Greta at all? Not really, but I can understand why some people would feel resistance to hearing these things. Personally, when I hear that I shouldn't fly anymore, that limits my freedom to move around and to go see friends in other countries like yourself mm -hmm. or, uh, or things like that. And my only other option is likely going to involve some sort of fuel as well. Boats use <laughs> fuel, cars use fuel, a sailboat is wind-powered, of course, but that is a dangerous trek across <laughs> the Atlantic Ocean that I can't say I'm willing to do right now. So I can see why there would be some resistance. Yeah, absolutely. So I think there's a couple different ways that people take this message. The first way they can take it is to become angry and lash out at her because of this, like to take the example of flying, right? We could hear this message And we could say, well, how dare you try to limit me and say that I can't do this, you know? Like, not everybody has the luxury of being able to take two months out of their life to sail across the Atlantic. Exactly. You could respond this way. Or you could respond by saying, huh, that's interesting. Okay, maybe there's some other ways I can reduce my carbon footprint in my life to offset this flight I need to take. Or you can start just thinking more about your personal impact on the climate. And, you know, small steps can lead to some big results if everybody does a little bit, right? We could, we could take it this way. But there's lots of people who take it the first way, who take the message the first way. And one of them is the president of, of the United States. And he's tweeted a lot about Greta. <laughs> have, you, have you noticed any of his tweets, Jeremy? No, I haven't. I don't, I don't go on Twitter very much. We talked about Greta's age as being part of her superpower, right? 
she's a young woman speaking her mind and really advocating strongly for what she believes in and for climate reform. But this is also something that has hurt her cause a little bit. Because of her age, she is perhaps not as respected as much as she should be. People say, oh, she's too young. What does she know about anything? What does she know about life? She has no real life experience. And she's been mocked quite a bit about this. So the fact that she is young, to some people, gives her credibility, like we were saying, because she is a young person. The future of this planet is much more important to her than a 97-year-old person. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, her age also makes her seem like a child in some people's eyes. And for that reason, they look down on her or they don't really respect her like they would respect another adult. However, like we said earlier, a 19-year-old or someone who was 21 and in college doing this very same thing would likely not get very much publicity. Jeremy, I think there is a lot that we could say about Greta, and we've only really scratched the surface here today. But I think she's a really interesting person, and that's why we have crowned her the most interesting woman in the world. I'm really curious about our listeners, what they think about Greta. And I would love it, guys, if you would send us an email and let us know your thoughts. Do you agree with the message and her movement, or do you disagree? And also, what is the impact of her movement in your community? Have there been any Greta-inspired protests or demonstrations where you live? Or is she new to you? Is this the first time that you're learning about her? We would also be really interested to know about this as well. So if you would like to send us a message... Just shoot us an email. Our address is contact at qlips.com. We are also all over the place on social media, on YouTube, on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter. So if you would like to get in touch with us that way you can do it or if you are a fan of these social media services please be sure to follow us so that you can stay up to date with all the news that's happening here at Qlips. Once again the study guide for this episode is available on our website qlips.com and that's also the place where you can listen to our entire back catalog of English lessons. There's over 500 available on our website. So please check that out as well. All right, Jeremy, we'll leave it at here for today. Thanks for listening, everyone. And we'll talk to you next time. Bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs>